are now listening to Just Another Year with Nick Rohde and Ryan Shadman. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Just Another Year Chicago, uh, hosted by myself, Nick Rohde, and my co-host, Ryan Shadman. And today we're going to be going over the complete disaster of the Chicago Bears. We're going to be talking about also other games around the NFL, alongside with what's going on in the NBA with the Chicago Bulls, uh, big Cubs news coming out this week that's also mutually tied with the Chicago White Sox, uh, hitting on the Chicago Blackhawks, and then wrapping it all up with NCAA hoops. So today to start, the Bears lose to the Detroit Lions 34-30 in the last two minutes at Soldier Field, baby. So just to start off, I mean, I don't, I don't, I, we, we had notes ready for the game. I don't really even know what to say. We, we don't even know what to say. Um, First things first, absolute disaster. Absolute disaster atrocious disaster last two minutes of the game i mean you you can't even describe you can't even describe the disappointment into the team into into this team you you are controlling the game till the last two minutes and sure the lions were i think within like a score every now and then but the bears the bears offense like fans were like holy crap this offense is cooking like things are happening they didn't punt till the second quarter which i don't even remember the last time that happened and I, I don't know. I mean, honestly, everything was looking good, except for the defense. We'll get into that. But Mitch was looking decent. David Montgomery, the run game. I mean, I said this when we started. Establish the run game. We really did that today. He looked great. But when it really matters, you really can't fall in the last two you minutes of the game. You can't fall on your face. No, you can't fall on your face. You can't fall apart. That's exactly what happened. That is, I mean, you are up. 10 points. It, it was 30 to 20. The Bears were dominant. They picked off Matthew Stafford. The game was over. The game was over. The no, game was some over. Some people turned it off. Yeah. Some people started moving over to the Vikings and Jaguars to see because that that's a, that was a huge determining game today. I mean, the nail in the coffin has been done in every single way for the Bears today. We're going to get into that, though. But to start, uh, first things first is that the Bears' offense looked a lot better today. It and, looked great. And it's hard, it's hard to talk positively right now, but the Bears' offense did look good. Uh, the offensive line, I thought, looked really good. I mean, I know it's against a Detroit. It's an, uh, against an okay Detroit defense. Uh, not the great, obviously, not the greatest. Yeah. But the, you know, they have a couple good guys. You know, Griffin on the other side of the ball. The the line looked like a unit. It didn't look confused. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, Leno out there. We're gonna we're gonna get more into depth on that. But we we stopped. I felt like after halftime, the Bears kind of stopped. They were like, okay, you know, we're comfortable. Let's just do this you know, little experiment thing. Like, let's see where it goes. And it didn't happen. No. And that's what they do every single time. The Bears will find an answer to something, like running the ball with Montgomery, running the ball with Patterson. Patterson had a huge running game. To, Patterson was player of the game for How the about Bears. that kickoff at the beginning of the game? Broke it for 50 yards. It, it was, I mean, it was a momentum. It was like, oh, man, the Bears, you know, this is what the Bears need. Yeah, the, exactly. This is what the Bears need. They need to come out, you know, guns blazing, and that's just not what happened. I came to the Bears game five minutes late. I got the notification on my phone that the game started Five minutes later, before I turned the game on, I got I saw that we got a field goal. I was like, our offense actually did something out here? Yes. And, I mean, uh, shout out Santos for, I mean, the one field goal he missed and the extra point. Like, yeah. it, it happens. It happens. I mean. But he did, but the Bears, like, they looked good. Yeah, they and, did. And, you know, now, after, ever since, uh, I mean, like the Green Bay game, the last two games, I feel like it's flipped. Now people are more worried about the defense than the offense. But it, that's not saying much. We played Detroit today. Yeah. But Detroit was the winners. And that's saying something about the Bears. The Bears have lost six games for the first time since in a row since 2002. And, I mean, we, what? We were five? We were six or five? Yeah. We yeah. Were. And um, it's, it's been a long time since the Bears have been this bad, especially after starting five and one. Um, so just to start things off, offensive overall grade for me, I'm giving the offense a C plus because they did well in the beginning. They had a strong run game. The receivers looked good. I mean, Allen Robinson started off hot. Mitch looked good. Overall, the in the line looked good. I'm giving them a C plus, but they fell apart in crucial moments of the game. Leno giving up a giving up that sack, the strip sack that set up Detroit. And also there was a drive killing holding call. 
Montgomery got the first down, and then we ended up punting, you know, two plays later. Yep. Um, so, you know, that I'm giving the offense a C plus. Ray, what grade? Uh, I'm giving the offense a C. I really liked Mitch today. He looked more of like a little game manager. Towards the end of the game, he had it around like 250 yards and only a touchdown, but he also did have that fumble. He kind of game managed. He looked really good. The receivers got separation from the secondary. That's a good line secondary over there. They're a little hurt young, right now. Young. Either. Young, young, but good. Talented, potentials there. Our receivers looked good. A. Robinson, beast. Looked amazing. Would love if Mitch looked at him a little bit more. Just a little bit more. There was a there was a crucial play, and I don't know if you remember this. He intended to throw it to Jimmy Graham, but Robinson was breaking it. It was oh, in yeah. the red zone. Robinson was wide he open. He was wide open. Mitch doesn't see plays like that. He, we, it's been like this for years. Like they'll they'll show a replay on the screen, and they will actually point out the fact that Mitch Trubisky missed the receiver going downfield. That's something with Mitch that I want him to get better at. I think it'll make him a better quarterback. He doesn't go through his motions. I think here and there he sticks to motion one or two. If they're not even open, he'll toss it to them anyways. He won't even go through all yes. those motions. Yes, he is horrible. It, it's like in Madden, you know, when like the you know your the receiver you're when supposed X to throw isn't to. open, you go to B. Yes, <laughs> but when, like the when the line is red over yellow, you're supposed to throw to, that's red. The play is intended for red. Exactly. Um, and you know, I think that Trubisky lives by that. He yeah. needs to throw to the guy that the play was designed for. You know, as every offense should do, but. I feel like he does it too much. He needs to move his head a little bit more. Head on a swivel. Keep like keep going through the rotation. Like your coverage, obviously, our offensive line needs a lot of work. That's why he's probably scared. He gets pressured. Right. We we saw it a lot today. He didn't get sacked a lot, but they were getting in his face. Like they were there, like in the backfield. So basically, Mitch needs help. I still don't think he's our quarterback of the future, but he looked great today. David Montgomery. I mean, I've said it from the beginning. The man's an, an animal. He has the potential. The talent is there. The line isn't there to help him out. Obviously, like you said, he's the third most. He has the third most uh, broken tackles in the league. Yes. But that's because everybody gets their hands on him within two seconds of him touching the ball. But with a beaten up lines front, the lines front isn't the best. He looked good today. He looked great. He made the plays when we needed him. He also didn't make the plays when we really needed them. Nick's gonna get into that. Uh. But basically, I'm giving the offense a C. I'm giving the offense a C, and I mean, I think that's a fair grade to give them. You, you know, going so let let's get into that. Uh, I know we kind of hit on it. Like, what do we do with draft picks? What do we do? What do we do? What do the Bears do moving forward? I mean, the Bears are done. Like now, I'm officially on the Bears done card. Uh, Jeremy Godzicki, if you're listening today, I know you text me every single Sunday that I'm praying for you. I'm worried about you. You know, I know that I I know you're in pain, and um, you know I am in pain, brother, and. Uh, I, I, I'm officially putting the nail in the coffin. The Bears are done this year. I know Ray said it last week, but speaking on that, I think what the Bears need to do is white white hair. You you got to keep. Yep. James Daniels, you got to keep. Yep. Unfortunately, he's hurt. You got to keep those two guys. Yeah. I think you keep Alex Bars. I think he has potential. I think he could be there. I and you know it's hard to say who you're going to put in at right tackle. Um, I mean, again, the line played okay. But, and that's what's wrong is now that now if you keep Ted Phillips, you keep Ryan Pace, you're like, oh yeah, the line was playing fine. Like, no, you, they sucked until the last, you know, two weeks. Um, I would get, I would buy out Leno, trade him for a seventh round pick or something, go out and use your first round pick on a left tackle, the best left, left tackle available or trade up. I, like get the best left tackle in the draft. I agree. My ideal situation in this very moment, I mean, I predicted the Bears to beat the Lions. I predicted, you did. I predicted them to win this game and then another game against the Jaguars, and then those were the rest of the wins that we'll get you all were going, season. You were going 7-9. to nine. Yes, I was going 7-9. to nine. I say lose every other game the rest of the season. Let's go for that top 10 pick. We really need it. We need a clean house in Chicago. Nagy, I'm sorry. I mean, it's not a surprise to anybody. You're fired. You got to be gone. Why I are you sorry? I mean, I'm I'm not sorry. He fuck the guy. Yeah, I agree. Fuck the guy. What are we doing about Pace though? You tell me that. Fuck that guy. Yeah, I agree. I mean, with that. Uh, like, okay, like you know, Pace. I really love that you're a defensive minded guy. Like you stuck to the Chicago Bears roots. You the monsters of midway. The you monsters them back. of the midway. You want him back? But you know what you did? You didn't invest one goddamn dollar in the offense. Yep. You didn't resign. You still haven't resigned Robinson. I don't think they will. And they're not. Why would you? No. I want if I'm Allen Robinson. 
Get the hell out of here. Go to Green Bay. The funny thing is, at the beginning of the season, he wanted the contract. He wanted to come back to Chicago. With these games that they're playing with him, we know that he's good. He's talented. They, we're not going to keep him anymore. They want to rebuild that offense from the beginning, I guess, and he hates us now. Yeah. He oh, hates he this hates organization. Being a bear. He hates being a bear. Hates being a bear. You can see the fire like leave his eyes in Chicago. Like It's actually insane. I don't know if anyone notices, but he's low-key balding. Like on the front. I've actually noticed a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I think he's so off. damn stressed. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't nothing wrong with balding, man. But like, you know. <laughs> the stress is getting to him. Well, you know? Stress is getting to him from being here. Um, but overall, I think that the number, I, like you said, the number of priorities, go get a good lineman. Um, who's that quarterback from BYU? Um, oh, what was his name? It's Zach something. I know this is embarrassing that we're talk show hosts for sports. Yeah, and we're, we're, we're drawing a blank right now, but. We'll, we'll get back to that. We'll, we'll, get, back yeah, to we'll that. get we'll get back to that. But he he's like the punky QB, like Jim McMahon. Try to trade up. I if I'm if if Ryan Pace comes back, let's just say Ryan Pace comes back, and you know he gets his third head coach during his trencher with the Chicago Bears. I say that you go out and get this guy from BYU, the punky. He's like because he, that's where Jim McMahon came from. Um, I. Go back to the Chicago roots. Go back to the Chicago. I mean, do the Super Bowl it. team. But when you say clean house, Ray, and we're gonna get to the defense, we're gonna get to the coaches in a second. But when you say clean house, are you saying like get rid of the whole defense as well? I I don't mean get rid of certain players. I mean, don't clean house entirely. We're not gonna start fresh from the you beginning. Can't. With these no, contracts, obviously. you can't. I'm saying get rid of the bad contracts. Get rid of the front office. Please give these guys some coaches that actually want to progress and make them look good out there. Not their experimental bullshit that they do on offense. No. I'm sorry, Nagy, but you are horrible. Actually, I'm not sorry. Nick told me I shouldn't be sorry. No, so don't I'm be not, sorry. I'm not sorry. But clean house completely. We don't need pace. We don't need Nagy. We need you're missing change. A, you're, you're missing a key person right now. Ted Phillips, get the hell out of the Bears organization. For you thinking that it's okay to lead a team and be this way— I don't even think like people are like the McCaskies sell the team. The McCaskies sell the team. Like, I, I, if I'm George McCaskey, I'm driving back to Lake Forest right now from Soldier Field, and you're sitting down with Virginia. Like I said, Gucci shoes, Gucci sunglasses, you know, fur coat and all, and you're saying it's time. Let's get rid of these three guys. Um, I would get, and here's my take: get rid of Chuck Pagano. Yeah, he has. We're gonna we're. Let's transition to defense. How about that? You okay. Know, um, we'll transition. What's your grade of the day for the defense? Um, I will give them a solid. I can't decide between a D or a D minus. I guess they're both bad. No one wants either. That's what the Chicago Bears defense was today. No one wanted them. They didn't show up. Surprisingly, the offense did. They haven't showed up the last two games. Seventy-one points in the last two games combined. Seventy-one points from the Bears defense. They gave up. Seventy-one. Oh yeah, yeah, you, yep. Yeah, oh wait, no, four more. No, seventy nine. I, I forgot that. Yes, you're correct. I'm I'm sorry. I I forgot. I thought the Bears got uh. Nope, seventy nine. You're yep. correct. You're yep. correct. Is that a top ten defense to us anymore? No. No. Is that a top ten defense in the league? No. It is not. No, and I th- I, I think uh you know what Tony Dungy said last week uh, during the Packers game this this defense gave up and. But the thing is, is that what's pissing me off is that the defense had no right to give up today because the offense actually was doing their job. To be fair, in the last touchdown that made us lose the game, that wasn't really their fault. They were put on the five yard line. Yes. So, but throughout the entire game, giving up twenty seven points to that Lions defense, or I'm sorry, their offense. Um, not hating on that offense at all. They don't have Swift though. That hurts them. Matthew Stafford is playing amazing right now. But like, we have a good defense. We should be able to lock these guys up. And if they don't have their starting running back. We shouldn't allow them to get 27 points in the first place. But then you have Adrian Peterson, a Bears killer, yeah, exactly. on your bench, who played fantastic today. I mean, the man's back in the NFC North and tearing it up just like he used to. I think that the Bears, and I said this earlier in the year, we didn't have a podcast yet, but the Bears should have went and got Adrian Peterson I agree. to back up Montgomery. I agree. And you know, teach him a thing or two. I mean, just Montgomery with some good mentoring would be awesome. I'm going to give the Bears... You're giving them a D minus. I'll give them a D minus. I'm yes. giving them a D minus as well. Okay. I think that the Bears defense played absolutely atrocious today. They had their moments. Um, you know, they look slow. Eddie Jackson. You, I mean, he just doesn't look like you. And that's my dude. I mean, we all know that's my dude. We all know that in the studio, I have an Eddie Jackson autograph literally hanging up right next to us. 
Um, like that's that is my dude. I love Eddie Jackson, but he is not showing up this year. And you know, if he's listening to this, um, you know, I'm still a huge fan of him. I still think he's a hell of a player, but he's. I feel like something's missing with him this year. Um, also, I felt like. They had the defense had shining moments today. I mean, uh, you know, Nichols picking it off in the last, which should have locked the game up. Um, yeah. You know, Buster Screen, even though I hate to say it, had a really good tackle um, when the Lions tried to get it on fourth down. He stopped it. Yeah, which awesome. That's he your shows job. that he wants a job. That's your job. You should have been doing it all season. Though I still get rid of the guy. I, I agree. You know, he should be gone. Um, and then. Matt got a sack in the second quarter, and then Screen blew it because of a illegal penalty. Yeah. So penalties killed us. Penalties killed us today again. Um, the Bears are just not a good penalty defense. Uh, Offense is, I guess, better at it. But Mac and Quinn were also held all game. You know, Robert Quinn actually was getting some pressure on the quarterback today. Mac was getting pressure on the quarterback today, and you know what? It's there's just holding every single The Bears time. haven't been getting calls all year, though, so you can't be surprised at that. And I think that they shot themselves in the foot because of it because I don't think, if any of our listeners are listening and you don't know this, the Bears like went on Twitter one time and said, like, these refs, like, suck. Like, they said it in their own different ways. Yeah. Of, like, you know, I, I can't speak of exact phrase, but the me- whole theme of the message was is that the, these refs suck. They don't give us penalties. And you can't do that. Yep. Because the refs control the game. I mean, that's a that's a topic that I want to get on was Jalen Johnson today. I mean, he can, he complained about a couple of calls. Bottom line, you also mentioned to me that he complained about a call last week. I mean, bottom line is you, you're here to play football. You're not supposed to, like, be here begging for flags. You're not here to ref. bitch. Yeah, you're not here to bitch. Don't, like, if, if you, if someone scores a touchdown on you, you don't go up to the ref and complain about how he didn't call a flag there. Get on your fucking guy. Right. Get, like, if, if, if he's not going to call, like, pull a flag then give them a reason to pull a flag make them do the play again fuck it you know like yeah like at least be there yeah don't complain don't go to the ref and bitch play football and, okay so he's a rookie i mean so he is to he, be fair he's a he, but he's a great rookie i mean he's amazing and i i think that he is in contention to be defensive rookie of the year i he's know that there. there's still there's still you know guys ahead of him mm-hmm. um but the way he's playing I mean, he had a chip on his shoulder walking in. He said that. He was like, I was projected to be a first-round pick, and he was taken late in the second round. Yep. Because people were like, he's injury-prone, all this stuff. Um, speaking of rookie, and, you know, shout-out Jalen Johnson. I like I like the kid a lot. I mean, I love the kid. I'm not I'm not talking down on his name at all. I just think that, like, you gotta do a little go. less complaining and a little more playing. Play, play foosball. Yeah, play a little foosball. <laughs> um Let's just let's just walk, and then uh, Travis Gibson, uh, rookie out of uh, T- Tusla, I believe I believe he's from. Um, he played his first NFL game today. His first career tackle was against Hall of Famer Adrian Peterson. I like I liked it. I thought like that's a shining moment. They talked about it um, during the game. Uh, I like that they're finally activating guys that they drafted. Yeah, um, it's give- what we need. I mean, if we're gonna be this bad, at least let the young guys that you drafted that you think have potential play the game. Yeah, especially that, since we're going back into rebuild. We're definitely going back into rebuilding. After we just this. wasted this defense. We, we I just- mean, I can officially call it that this defense officially has gotten wasted. If they would have went to the playoffs last year, I don't think this defense would have gotten wasted. I but mean, the yeah. fact that they didn't, and then we're not gonna make it this we're year. We're not gonna make. Still, I mean, there's a still a chance. I'm not. No, we're not. I'm not. I'm. I'm saying the Bears are done to try to mentally get over it. Like again, I literally was numb in my apartment for like five minutes after um, they officially called the game. I mean, before we started filming this podcast, Nick told me that he needed a minute to compose himself. Yeah. <laughs> so to put himself back together. Yeah, I was supposed to come here. Uh, so we're filming right now. It's 4:28 Central Time, um, right outside Chicago, and. Um, I was supposed to be here, what, like directly after the game? You told me 3 o'clock. And I didn't get here until 4 (laughs) o'clock. And Ray Ray texted me. He goes, where are you? I was like, I I still need a minute. So um, overall, yeah, defense, D minus. Get it together, guys. If if you're going to give up, at least give these rookies, you know, a chance to prove themselves to see who maybe we can get some trade package value for or who's going to take over guys' spots after we get rid of some of these contracts. Right. Um, let's just go straight into coaches. F. 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 F is not for friends who do stuff together. No. Nope. F- friends. Uh, F is for failure. You, failure. You failed. You, you, 
a lot of swear words, a lot of f bombs. You failed the Chicago. You failed the city. You have failed these fans. You have failed these players. Clean house of every single Chicago Bears coach. I don't care. Bill Lazor. And maybe if you walked in, we would have won. I don't care if it's a locker room coach handing out towels. Clean it out. Clean all of it. Um. I mean, there's nothing else to say. Clean house. I mean, it, it was bad. It's It's been bad all year. It's been bad for the last couple of years. I said it last week. I'll say it again. Virginia needs to either talk to the team, fire all the coaching staff on the team, or sell the team. Yep. There needs to be change in Chicago football. We haven't seen it in years. Right. And, uh, you know, in my and there was one call. The, the Mitch fumble. Yes. Why would you not run it on third and three? Why would you throw it, Bill Lazor? And here's here's something I want to discuss. Nagy was looking at his play card a lot yeah, in the second was. half. And I think, he wasn't in the first. I think that he was calling plays. You think that he was out there calling I plays in the second half? I think that Matt Nagy was calling plays. They weren't showing the camera on Bill Lazor. They weren't doing anything like they've done the last couple games. You, you think that since they were winning the game... They switched over to Nagy. Yeah, Nagy thought that he could take over the play calling and do a little bit of his experimentation. Yes. And there was no experimentation. No, none, none whatsoever. I, th- I think that I, I, I'm seriously very out there that Matt Nagy was calling plays in the second half because the offense was cooking yep. in the first half. I, I don't, I... You think when Nagy gets fired from Chicago, he even gets a job anywhere else? Like even as an assistant or anything? Because he's coach of the year, he will. That's what he'll, I was He'll thinking. get some sort of job. He'll, he'll get an offensive job again. Jason um, Garrett looked good that one year. Cowboys haven't been good ever since that one year that they made it. Yes. Where they were actually above 500. And now he's the defensive coordinator in uh, New York, I believe. Yes, so, he's defensive coordinator in New York. I'm just curious. I'm just asking if I think if he thinks that Nagy will uh, get a job anywhere Do you else. think he's going to get a job? No. I don't think he deserves one. I mean, I think that there's going to be a team out there that probably needs him and will, like— want to use like a one-year deal yeah like to see like how he plays but do i think he deserves it no no and here here's something else about matt Nagy is that the dude like walks around chicago like he's a god yeah like you are the most egotistical person i've ever met like heard of in my entire life i've never met the guy but just super egotistical like just just Get get your get get off your high horse. Know that you suck and that you're on your way out. I mean, he in the last couple of minutes, it looked like he knew he was on his way out. I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if you know it hasn't gotten to the press yet. But Nagy and Pace are driving to Hallis Hall right now, straight from Soldier Field, not even thinking of anything, just driving in their car down 94, and they know that this is it. Like they're they're going to pack up their offices right now. They're literally going to pack it all up. And I think that what they have to do is that they have to keep Pagano because he's the only one with head coaching experience on that entire coaching staff. You think he becomes interim head coach? I think he becomes interim, and then they're going to fire him after. Because when of, we're still not good. When we're still not good. Um, I mean, they're done. They're they're done. Chuck uh, Pagano, to be fair, was not the best head coach in Indianapolis either. No, and, and he was very defensive minded, which is which is good, but like offensive play calling, he was. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> it, it would be like Nagy all over again, except the defense would. He would try to take over the defense. He would do both, and it's just not worth it. Yeah. Um. So let's, on a lighter note, next week's matchup against the Texans. We'll get more into that in our Wednesday night podcast. Yeah, we'll talk about that more. But I I think the Bears lose this game against the Texans. I mean, the Texans are a lot better than they were at the beginning of the season. I mean, I agree. They're, don't let that 4-8 and eight next to their name, like, fool you, because that's a good Texans team over there. I don't know if anybody else watched that game because we were watching the Bears game, but they came down to the wire with the Indianapolis Colts, who are a solid Super Bowl contender, in my opinion, because of that solid defense. But, I mean, besides that fumble, they fumbled it on the five-yard line with 30, 40 seconds left in the game. They could have won the game. But that Deshaun Watson, he's an animal. He's the truth. I mean, besides Patrick Mahomes, he Pro. I mean <laughs> besides Patrick Mahomes, he was the second best quarterback in that draft class. Sorry, Mitch. I mean yeah, sorry we to burst took your bubble. Mitch. Yeah, we took Mitch. <laughs> but Deshaun Watson's an animal. We're losing that game. But we'll get more into that later. Well, yeah, we'll hit on that Wednesday night. Let's let's get on a better subject for Bears fans, uh, and fans overall. Around the NFL. Mike Glennon. 
Mike of the Lennon. Jacksonville Jaguars almost led the Jaguars to a win over the Minnesota Vikings, which what we were hoping for. Yeah, it would have been huge for us. It would have been huge for the Bears if they would have won. Even if they lo- even with this loss, it still would have been huge for the Bears. But now the nail has been put in the coffin in the NFC North. Um, the I, I looking at his stats, he wasn't horrible. I mean, to be honest, I think Glennon's their guy moving forward. I think they keep Gardner on the bench and see who they can pick up. In Did the you draft. ever think Gardner was good? I didn't think he was good, but I thought that. He's who they needed for the moment. Yes. I mean, obviously, everybody knew they were going to be bad this year. They only have one win. Obviously, they're going for a quarterback. They were one and zero. They were one and zero. I mean, that quarterback looks like it's going to be Justin Fields, the second quarterback taken in this year's draft. I mean, drafts get shaken up, but it seems like they are going for a quarterback. Glennon should be their long term guy because they looked great today. I mean, against a Minnesota team that's red hot, right? Red now. hot. They need the wins too, which they got. I think that the Vikings are going to make the playoffs this year. Really? That's a hot take. I I think they. I mean, what they've won they five out of their last six. Yeah, they're going to sneak in as the last wild card spot. Really? Those wild card teams are good. I I think the Cardinals are still too inexperienced. Next year, the Cardinals are. Are they beating the Rams currently? Um, last time I checked, they were up against the Rams. Let me take a quick look, everybody. While Ray's taking a look, uh, I just want to hit on this super fast. Uh, the Jets almost beat the Oakland Raiders today, but at the very last minute, a 46 yards touchdown by Oakland. Nail in the coffin. I think the Jets, if, if for Bears fans that are listening, if we want to feel a little bit better about ourselves, we are not New York Jets fans. No, we are not New York Jets fans, but. They should have won that game. I feel so I, I bad for I, them. They're going to go, like you said, you predicted they're going 0-16. I mean, I did predict that they would go 0-16. doesn't mean that I want them to. They should have won that game. They, they should have won that. I, I agree. Um, but I feel so bad for that team, but I don't feel bad for Adam Gase. I mean, he's horrible. He's horrible. Uh, and also, you know, John Gruden, I, I don't even know what to think about the team now because, like, they— they're pretenders. There was, They're not contenders. So much, there was so much momentum at the end of last season. They come into this season. They, they're looking really good. And now, at the beginning. And they have these playmakers, but then it's just... I've been calling it all year. Don't let them fool you. They're pretenders. They're definitely not contenders. Yeah, I agree. I agree. <laughs> and by the way, the Rams are beating the Cardinals 14-7, to if anybody was wondering. Hey, that, I mean, hey, that, that helps the Bears. It does. It, it does. But again, the Bears are done. Yep. The Bears are done. We'll talk about them. You know, obviously, we're still diehard Bears fans, but they are done. Um, anything else around the league that you want to hit on, Ray? I mean, nothing too important. I don't think so. The Browns? The Browns look legit. The Browns look legit. I think the Browns have a shot in making it to the AFC Championship, and they'll lose. Yeah. I mean, honestly, that's a good Browns team over there. They put up, what was it, 41? 41 points. On the Tennessee Titans. That's not an easy... That's not. That's a tall task. Yeah. In Tennessee. Yeah. And they shut down Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry got five fantasy points today. <laughs> five. <laughs> pain. There pain. Was a, there was a lot of pain around the league today. Yeah. But in all, I think, I think the Browns are contenders. They're not pretenders. No, they're definitely not pretenders. They are contenders. I have the... So this is me. Yes. Browns, Chiefs, AFC Championship. But I'm agreeing with you that the Chiefs are going back to the Super Bowl this year. I still have the Seahawks really? making it to the Super Bowl. You don't have the Saints? You still no. don't buy into them? I, there's just something about the Saints that I just— That you just don't buy into? I think they're contenders. What about when Drew comes back? He hasn't been playing for the last three weeks. They've won every game. I, I think that— They're 10-2. They, and I, two. I think they stick with Hill. They Wait, have to. I mean— You can, you put a fragile Drew he's Brees playing. Out there. He's playing well. Yeah. I know I have him on my bench, so no one else could pick him up. <laughs> but yeah, I, I I think that the Saints are good, but they're not the dominant team. Seattle, there's just something about Seattle that you're just like you gotta look out every single time. The funny thing is, I think the AFC is the superior conference, but the Chiefs have it single handedly. They're gonna win, in my opinion, even though the Steelers are eleven and zero. Oh yeah. I think the NFC could be up for grabs, but the NFC is significantly more worse than those good AFC teams. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it's like the NBA Western Eastern Conference. Yeah, like, it's it, always a joke, and it, we're always on the uh, wrong end of it. The Chicago <laughs> teams are always on the wrong end of uh, I would say in hockey, though, the Hawks have— Used like, to during, be. During, it was more— it was During even, the dynasty. During the dynasty. Uh, we're we're going to get into the Hawks in a little bit, though. But, again, we're not going to get into Rays five big games of the day— 
we're just we're just kind of we're gonna go through the podcast. We're gonna give you guys the information that you need moving forward for the week. Give you guys that Monday morning, Sunday night, Sunday night, Monday morning. Listen, uh, get ready for Wednesday. Wednesday is gonna be a big podcast for both of us. Yep. Um, but let's let's hit on the bowl. Let, let's let's move into the bowl. So training camp started. Training camp did start, and uh, the bowl's opening night is, I believe, the twenty third, the twenty second or twenty third. I believe it's the twenty second against the Atlanta Hawks at the United Center. Um, so my three takes from training camp is that Kobe White is pretty much locked in at point guard one. I mean, he should be. He should be. And, you know, uh, Billy Donovan saying it himself, I, I, I like Kobe White. I see him being number one. He's putting in work. I mean, you see these videos of him. He's doing well. Patrick Williams also apparently is ripping it. I know that you were a hater last week. We're going to... What are you feeling this week about him? I mean, I looked at some research into Bulls camp because, I mean, obviously we're in the season of the Bears and we're huge Bears guys. But out of all the Chicago teams, I'm a big Bulls guy. That's my team over there. Yeah. So I looked a little bit into camp. And from what I've been seeing, he's he's promising. He has the potential. He has the build. I shouldn't have hated on him last week as much as I did. I just think still it was, from what we see so far, it was too high to take him right there. But... From what I've seen in camp, they really like the kid. He has a lot of potential. I like that Billy Donovan likes him a lot. And um, basically, we'll see where it goes from here. He'll be a good sixth man coming off the bench probably this year. Hope Maybe maybe a seventh man. He is a rookie still. But the team looks promising coming into the year. I, I think that Patrick Williams starts if they're somehow able to get rid of our At the order. beginning of the season or later on in the season? Beginning. If we get rid of Otto Porter. If we get rid of Otto Porter. Interesting. I th- That's something about, like, you know, they did it with LeBron. Like, they did—I mean, obviously LeBron's LeBron. I mean, th- that's a different species over No, there. but what I'm saying is that, like, you know, you Derrick Rose started. Derek, I mean, these guys are, like, clear number one picks, though. These, like, like a like a Zion, I'm saying. Or, like— Sure. I don't see that Patrick Williams being that quite yet. But you know I what think I mean? that that gives you that player that confidence. It gives Does the that player sense? the confidence, but— is it what the team needs in the moment? It's exciting. It's exciting. Okay. It's exciting. For the fans. It's for the fans. The, the Bulls have had nothing to cheer about the last couple of years. That's true. I mean, Kobe White opened it up after All-Star break, unfortunately, with COVID, shutting down the season. The Bulls were not put into the playoffs. Everything, the way it worked out, I think that the Bulls need something exciting, and they need a 19-year-old walking on that court as a starter. But... You know, it, like you said, it's probably going to happen that he's going to be a sixth man or a seventh man, which He'll is probably fine. come in later during the season or maybe next season to become a starter. We'll we'll see. I, I'm hoping for the best. Uh, and then finally, Otto Porter still is actively being chopped. If he, he has, as he should be, as he should be, I don't think he's going anywhere. No one wants twenty eight million dollars with a guy like that. Agreed. Um, but what do you do if you do keep him and you start the season? Do you just tell him not to show up or and still pay him? Or what are you doing here? I mean, bottom line, from the Bulls organization, either way, even if they don't want him, they have a contract with this guy. He's going to show up to work. He wants to get paid. He will get paid. That's not something that we want. If you do a buyout. I mean, we could do a buyout. We'll see what they really want to do with him. He's not worth the money that we're giving him. I don't want him in the starting lineup when we start the season because I love this young core that's coming in now. We got Kobe White, we got Zach Levine, we got Laurie, we got Wendell, and now we have Patrick Williams. This is a good young core that could start all together. We built everything that we need to be a good, solid team in the next coming years. Otto Porter's just kind of dragging us down. He, he, and the cap hit, it's, the cap it's hurting. Huge. It's I mean, hurting. Again, everything happens for a reason. Uh, the, I mean, the free agent... Free agency class was pretty good this year, um, but wasn't anyone like, oh my god! But next year, I mean, AD did resign for LA, so that's next subject. Uh, AD signing a five-year, one hundred ninety-one million dollars max contract with the Los Angeles Lakers. I don't want him coming to Chicago now. I don't want him coming to Chicago, and that hurts my feelings so much. And uh, so much it hurts and, my feelings. And if anyone doesn't know, Anthony Davis is a Chicago native. He is. Um, he is. He started his career. He went to Kentucky. Then he started his career with, at the time, Horn, uh, New Orleans Hornets that then became the New Orleans Pelicans. And then he eventually worked his way out and moving to the obviously the Los Angeles Lakers. It was reported that he wanted to play for the Bulls at some point in his career. A lot of people thought that this was the moment, young team. He'd be the leader. He'd be the guy. And the Bulls front office said nope and didn't try to trade for him or anything like that. And Gar Foreman, John Paxson, 
did did everything they could to destroy this team. And now he's going to be at the Lakers during all of his prime years. And if the Bulls were to bring him in, he'd be more of a mentor. I mean, I I love the man because he's a Chicago native. I'm really happy for him. He went out there and he won an NBA championship for L.A. I mean, good for him. But, I mean, it just hurt because he did say that if the opportunity was there, he would come and play in Chicago. But the team, he just came off of a championship run. They just won the NBA title. He's not going to come to a team that's rebuilding after he just came off of a championship run with LeBron. So he stays in LA for five more years, no matter how long LeBron decides to stay in the league. But at that point, he's going to be so old. We don't, at that point, we don't need him. And I wanted him to be a Chicago Bull. I, I agree. I agree. I, it, it, I agree with you in that regard. I think that Two things. One, I think that he should have came here because why would you not want to be the guy? Like, LeBron went to L.A. Because they they might just build a dynasty in L.A. now. And that it, That's likely going to happen. I mean, one of the biggest markets. And yep. it, it's just— Lakers it's organization. Lakers organization, the history, oh, yeah. everything. Um, speaking of LeBron really fast, I think that he is going to stay in the league till Bronny is in the league— and he's going to somehow work his way to make sure that the Lakers trade certain picks and whatever to make sure that the Lakers, even if they win the championship, take him and have like the first father-son duo, on the, which would be sick. I mean, it would be That'd unbelievable. Be so sick. And he's been talking about how he's going to stay in the league until he accomplishes that. And, I mean, LeBron James, he, he sticks to his word usually. So. And he's still, I mean, what is he, 38? He's 35. No. Yes. Is he 35, 36? He's 35. He might have just turned 36, but I, I... But he's still balling out like he's 23. Yeah. So I don't, I don't see LeBron going It looks like he's playing in his prime right now. Yeah. It's ridiculous. He's just... He a, just gets better with age. He's, he's like scotch. He's like, like <laughs> a fine wine. <laughs> uh, but yeah, going off that, let, let's talk about uh, the Bulls' schedule real fast. So the Bulls open up pretty... Against some pretty tough teams. Uh, you know, the Clippers are looking... You know, decent again. Uh, the Warriors, now that everyone's healthy, uh, for people that don't know, the Warriors had like a, I would say like a small gap because everyone was injured. Was, Everybody was hurt. KD left. I mean, they don't have Clay. Clay re injured yeah, his Clay uh, Thompson, Achilles. Their sh- uh, shooting guard. Yeah, out a, for the rest of the season. Is out for another season because of a torn Achilles. Uh, Steph Curry is back, though, which is one of the best point guards in the league. Draymond Green's coming back. Uh, and then, the, you know, they got some really you good rookies. You know I'm really excited to see? Who? That new Nets team with Kyrie and Kevin, a healthy Kevin Durant. Yes. That's going to be an exciting team in Brooklyn over there. Kyrie, Durant, Harden. Maybe Harden. I that is, know. it's a little rumor. It's going to, uh, come on. It's, I mean, is Houston completely rebuilding? That I think, John Wall trade. I, I, I did like, so John Wall, uh, uh, longest, he's been with the Wizards his whole career. Yep. Just, I, I didn't see the trade coming. No, I didn't see that coming at all. Uh, for Rus- Russell Westbrook, who has now bounced around from a couple teams. Uh, he, he just wants to be the guy, which I don't he's really not appreciate. The guy. I don't appreciate it from him because it just kind of makes me look at him as a stat stuffer, and that's what I think he is. Right, and that's why I'm happy the Bulls didn't go after him. Yep, I agree. Um, even though he's a very good point guard. I actually saw He's very him, talented. I actually saw him play um, the season, so it was a 2012-2013 uh, season after the Thunder lost to the Heat in the finals when it was yeah. Harden, Durant, and Westbrook. And um, I actually went to that first Thunder Bowl series at the United Center and watched that. And I was like, man, if we had Russell Westbrook and Derrick Rose on the same team. But then you look at his attitude. I mean, when he won the MVP, he was a ball hog. He was shoving guys out of the way to get rebounds. He just wanted to He wanted to uh, finish the season with an average of a triple-double. Double. That's, a, that's a stat stuffer. Yeah. That's not an NBA championship caliber player. Yeah, yeah, that's not a teammate. I agree. Um, but overall, I mean, the Bulls are, and then the, the Bulls play the Bucks, uh, the Lakers, all within two weeks of each other. So... It's a pretty big challenge to see how this Bulls team does. I say that they beat one good team. I think we get smacked early in the season. Yes. I think we get sm- I, I think we I think we have a shot at beating the Atlanta Hawks. I mean, yeah. I think that yes. we can start we can start we can win the first game of the season and one I mean, starting the season 1 and 0, I feel like you can gain some momentum. Yeah, a little bit of momentum. It's just 81 games after that, you know. Yeah, well, let's see if we make it 81 games. Exactly. Yeah, um, Corona. But um, yeah, I think that the Bulls. I think the Bulls 
beat the Clippers out of those tough teams. Paul George and Kawhi, you think we have it in us? I, I mean, like, it's so toxic over in Los Angeles. It I mean, is really toxic in Los, Los Angeles, but, I mean, still Kawhi the, Leonard. The Los Angeles Clippers, not the Lakers. Oh, no, I know, I know. Uh, I think that they get smacked by the Lakers. I think they get smacked by the Bucks. But, again, like, this is a completely new Bulls team. We're, there's no expectations except up from here mm-hmm. and we're at the bottom of the abyss the bulls have been bad if you haven't been watching the bulls the bulls have been bad the bulls are bad yes um let's uh and final subject about the bulls larry marketing so when we got rid of jimmy butler who is now one of the best players in the nba we traded for a seventh round pick uh zach levine and chris Dunn. Zach Levine, who is a potential All Star this year. I mean, he's amazing. He's I a love very him. good player. I mean, what a, what a comeback story from the ACL. Yep. Um, Zach Levine is the Bulls franchise player right now. Yep. Easily. Not not Otto Porter Jr. But <laughs> then, but the Bulls last seventh round pick that year when we did get um, Zach Levine, it was Larry Markkinen. That was who Larry Markkinen. Plays a lot like Dirk Nowitzki. Has a lot of potential, but he's very injury prone. And I think that's because the Bulls have had bad trainers over the last couple of years. I know they got a new, you know, weight training and uh, tr- overall training staff uh, in the past. He wants a contract extension. His agent's pushing for one, but I don't think Lowry deserves it yet. If he were to go out and ball out the first 40, 41 games of the season, let's say, just absolutely rips up the league. Like the Bulls have a winning record, it's behind him and Zach. Right. Then give him an extension. Right. I don't give Lauren Market a big extension, but I give him like a two year and I know people are gonna go, that's a lot of money, but a two year, like thirty five, forty million dollar contract. Like just pay it pay him enough to keep him wanting to play well, but also put him on a leash like, okay, like, you know, you gotta go out and do it again and again, and then you'll get that max contract. I mean, I think this story is kind of interesting because we took the guy seventh overall. Stud his first year on the all NBA rookie team. Yeah, the guy is seven feet tall, seven one, can drain it from three, can play down low, can rebound the ball like crazy. He's a great player. A year and a half ago, he said he wanted to leave Chicago. Yeah, he said we're not winning. I'm young. I don't want to waste my talent here. I don't think he said that exactly, but like that's what it felt like. He that said was the to, message. Yeah, that's the message. Like I'm young. I don't want to waste my talent here. We're losing games. Like get me out of here. Right. He's been injured a lot now. So, yeah. dude, teams don't really want him. Now he's crawling back to the Chicago front office being like, hey, extend me. Like, I want the money. I want to play here now. But do you? Like, do you want us to give you the money and you're just going to keep getting hurt like we did with Derrick Rose? Yeah. Like, like what's going to happen with you? That's why I think this story is really I- interesting with Lowry. I'm excited to see what they do. I'm excited to see how he plays this season to see if he deserves the money. But I want him to stay around. We took him seventh overall for a reason he seems like he does want to play here now that he's not he doesn't have offers anywhere else yeah. so we'll see i agree i i think that it's let's see how the season plays out i would like him to stay if he can prove it but yeah. if he can't prove it then sorry i i the, i mean there's so many free agents it's not like the bulls are like oh my god like there's no one to replace him like well go ahead, look at the free agents list next year there's plenty of chances to replace lottery market in but let's Let's see how it plays out. Yep. Um, let's move into the Cubs. Len Casper. Just when I got when I got the ESPN notification that Len Casper was leaving the Cubs to go to the Chicago White Sox as a radio. Yep. I was taken back at first. I was like, "What hap- What is going on in, in the North Side that people don't know? First, you get Theo, then you get Kyle, and now you have Len Casper, who has been the uh, the voice of the Cubs for the last sixteen years." What I heard is is that he's always wanted to do radio. He's always, and that's what I was getting at. He's always wanted to do radio, and the White Sox, and apparently, like he's always been a fan of the White Sox. Yeah, he said he was at the 2005 World Series while working for the Cubs. Yeah, not saying you can't. Oh my God, you can't go to the White Sox because you work for the Cubs. Like no, like it's not like the Cardinals, Cubs. There is bad blood with the Cubs and Sox, obviously. Um, but I I respect the move. Yeah, I, I do was too. shocked at first, but I respect you're doing something for your career. You're doing something that you love. He's I, doing something that makes him happy. You I'm, know, I'm curious how much money they're paying him. Though. Yeah, but to be a radio guy, it was a big story. The Sox did make the Cubs look bad in that move. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, the Sox are the Sox are the new Cubs of 2014, 15, 16. The, I all mean, those years a couple years ago. I mean, we are talking about the Sox on this podcast. I am Next. A, personally, I am a Cubs fan, but. The Sox are fun to watch. 
The Cubs are they're nuts. good. Yeah, the, I don't know what happened to the Cubs. And I mean, the Sox have this like swag to them. Like it's it's like fun to watch them. I like Tim Anderson. I also like Tim. I Anderson. really like dude. Tim young Mankata with like the popped collar and the chain. Like he just walks up there like a baller. Like you know, like that's what you want out of. And team. Jose Abreu is like it's like the big hurt two point Yeah, exactly. Like I never got to really experience Frank Thomas. Like I don't remember it. Mm-hmm. But then he, he went out and won the AL MVP, and I feel like no one in Chicago is talking about it. I mean, it was a cut down season it with was. an asterisk next to it. So I mean, he still he played, won, he well. but that's like saying that the Lakers. Won the NBA to, title. I mean, mm. to be fair, they almost finished their season, and then they came into the bubble later on to finish that season. The baseball started from like the beginning to the end. You know, I still think that it was a joke. Yeah, I know you. You think that it was a better. It was better. Mm-hmm. And then, I mean, I, I that statement makes sense. I still think that for a baseball player with no spring training in this day and age of baseball, it's not Iron Man baseball anymore. Yeah. And I think that, and then they took a break from spring training. Then they came back. Mm-hmm. No fans. This is playing different divisions. Like they, like it was just weird. Yep. And I it think, was really weird. Yeah. And Jose Abreu, uh, I we're, we're hitting on the Sox when we're in the Cubs right now. But I like Jose Abreu. I like what they have over in the soft side. I just wish that they would move, uh, you know, U.S. our guaranteed rate. I wish they would move, like build a new stadium in South Loop. That would be kind of cool. That'd be sick. I mean, South Loop's booming, obviously. Like, yeah. It's still booming from 10 years ago. That'd be so cool. That and, would actually be really sick. But, yeah, like you go to the South Side and... I don't know if you've ever... Guaranteed been... Raid is not a bad stadium. No. I've, I've, I've seen a bunch of Sox games there. It's just like... It's kind of old. It's kind of run down. I mean, not saying that Wrigley isn't. I'm just saying, like, Wrigley has the history. That's not something else I want to talk about. Wrigley has the name. They've had the name for years and years and years. But, yeah. like, I don't like stadiums that sell their rights and, like, change their name, like, all the time. Like, Wrigley's historic. Everybody knows Wrigley's It'll never Wrigley. change. But, like, you go from, like, U.S. Cellular to Guaranteed Rate, like, eh. Like, that's I mean, not... U.S. Cellular is not much to, like... I mean, they do get to call themselves I... the G-Spot now, so... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, children. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I, I agree with you. I think that they should have kept it Comiskey Park. Uh, but yeah, that would have been cool. Yeah, I, I it's what it is. But I think I, I've been. I went to a, a Sox game last summer, not this recent summer, so 2019, uh, for a company outing, and it was it was fine. Yeah, it's a nice I, park. I, I went to a bar mitzvah there um, back in middle school, and it was. I mean, it's a cool park. Don't get me wrong. It's just that there. It's just in such a weird location. Like it. Like there's nothing around it. You yeah, know, I agree. There's one bar that you can go to outside, and it's not the, nothing to write home about. Yeah. Um, but I think that the Sox, if they were to build that area like the South Loop, it could have a shot. But if not, there's so much space over there. Still, so just build it with some buildings around it, or figure out the road and all that stuff. Um, but I agree with you. You can't you can't switch Wrigley. Yeah, you, Wrigley's just it's historic. Also, you just you walk into Murphy's after you know whether it's a win or a loss, you're having a good time in Wrigley after. Exactly. Um, so going off that, Kyle Swarber really quickly, um, and Albert Armoro. I know we talked while we were having our podcast last time. They officially made they made it official that they're not completely re-signing Almora or Kyle Swarber. There's still a chance at it. Um, I say Ian Happ wrote like, you know, he's a threat if we get rid of him. Sure, but what's he? Where where can he play on this Cubs team? I mean, he was a catcher. I thought he played better at catcher. He's not an outfielder, that's for sure. I mean, that's true. I think he played pretty well at third base. He didn't look bad there. I mean, he could be more of an infield. He is really small, but I mean, we don't necessarily need him to honestly play the field. We can bring him him in as a DH. We would have to refill that position with probably Almora or Schwarber, but honestly, none of those guys are good in the field. They all play pretty horrible in the field. I'm really happy that we got rid of Almora and Schwarber. They suck. So, oh man! So I mean, they gave a lot to the Cubs, and but Schwarber, ever since he's come back from like that ACL tear, he hasn't been the same. He hasn't been good. I mean, he he hits a couple ding dongs. Yeah, thirty every, plus home runs is uh, thirty plus home runs. That's good. I mean, yes, that's one stat. But when you're batting two hundred, that yeah. do we need that? No, you don't get on base. There also were a lot of defensive plays where I'm just like, oh my god. And if, also, if to, Chris Bryant was out there, it could have been better. Also, to be fair, he was our leadoff guy, so all those home runs he didn't get many RBIs with him. So we only put one run on the board there. True. Sure. <laughs> sure. 
Um, moving, uh, we've kind of already hit on the Sox with Len Casper. Um, predictions for next season, Ray. What do you think about the Sox? I think the Sox win their division. The twin that's going to be a good division over there. Um, the Twins got a real good shot. The Twins have been good for the last couple of seasons. They made the playoffs. Detroit's coming out of nowhere. They've made the last couple of good draft picks because they were a really bad team a couple years ago. They're turning it around a little bit. Um, the Indians still consistently good, but I think the Sox, I mean, that team, they, they're solid. I got the Sox going, I'm with you, winning the division, uh, winning 90 games. Wow. Okay. I, think, I think that the Sox are going to be good. I think that the Sox... If all goes well, no injuries, everyone comes back healthy, everyone's ready to go, make, you know, that team builds that gel, I think the Sox could be in the World Series next year. I think they have a very— That's a hot take. I think they have a—not a very good shot, but a strong chance. I agree. They're, I mean, they're going to the playoffs. Yeah, they're I was about to playoffs. say, they will be in the playoffs. And, they're the great, and the White Sox have had the greatest playoff team in baseball history back in 2005. That yeah. I don't think is talked about enough, and I'm a Cubs fan. Yeah, they lost one game in that series. In, in, no, not in that series, that entire playoff that run. That entire playoff race. And I think that the Sox are going to be very good for the next five years, at least the next five years. I just hope that they don't have what happened with the Cubs, that they have this young group that's supposed to win multiple championships and they win one we won one the cubs broke the curse great but we after that first one we're, like, we're winning at least another the cubs are regressing and the Sox are coming out of nowhere to be unbelievable it was a too long of a rebuild yep um and i think that the i think that the white Sox again are going to be good this year so i'm excited for the white Sox fans um we're gonna we're gonna slowly start wrapping up here um we're gonna run into so Ray went to U of I. I went to Illinois State. We're both going to hit on our teams for this past week uh, just to start things off. Illinois State is standing at 2-2. Two and two. Uh, They lost yesterday to Murray State, which, you know, I thought it was a fine game. Uh, but two games ago against Division Three Greenville, Illinois State won 177-107. to 107. Not, wow. saying, not saying it's great that we gave up 107 points, but we scored 177 points, which was obviously an Illinois State record. I mean, you guys probably stopped trying, to be fair. Oh, well, I mean, to make it kind of competitive. Yeah. I mean, but still 70 points is <laughs> 70 points. Um, I mean, they set two NCAA records with the highest field goal percentage in a game and most assist in a game, which I was like, hey, let's take it. Um, led by freshman Imam Washington. I was never heard of this guy. Uh, I used to go to every single Illinois State basketball game my junior and senior year, and I just missed him, obviously, by two years, but... He came out of nowhere, and this this guy is just ripping it up. Uh, I was super excited about it. Um, so the birds are standing at two and two. I know they had the really rough, really bad loss against Ohio State uh, to start the season, but um, you know they have Bradley in that division. The the Valley isn't like the sexiest basketball conference in the whole entire you know whole all the college basketball. Hey, you have Loyola Chicago. They went to the Final Four. They uh, really haven't done much. Since, since then, since then. <laughs> I, I so I, I took um I took my girlfriend's dad I took my dad and then uh, you know my good friend Adam Kinross I, I think Adam's probably listening today uh but I took them to the Birds Lyle game right before Corona hit like it was late it was middle middle February um at Loyola Illinois State we sat one row off the floor which was sick for like ten dollars a ticket. That's amazing. And I don't. And no one knows this, but Loyola plays in literally a high school sized gym. For I be, believe that. For being a team that they were, they play in a high school sized gym, and it was packed because it was Illinois State Loyola. You know, competitive rivalry. That year that Loyola went to the Final Four, Illinois State and Loyola went to Arch Madness, and they went at it in the final game. And Loyola came across. Don't blame them, obviously, but. Loyola was there when Illinois State was had a good team, and they were. Just you guys good. weren't bad a couple of years back. No, we you were, guys had a solid team. We were good, and we had, you know, Paris Lee, Phil Fain, uh, Yarborough. Like we had some really good players, and they just couldn't pull it together at the end. But um, going off of that, I think that Illinois State is doing, you know, fine. Uh, but that's just me. That's my little. There was a lot of dunks and layups in that big game over Greenville, but. Illinois State's 500. I'll take it any day of the week. Ray, I want you to talk about, in your feels, about the Illinois-Baylor game. Let's hear it. I mean, there's not really much to say. We lost the game. Um, 
Baylor's a good team over there. I honestly think that they're the best defensive team in the country. We turn the ball over a lot. They're really good with their hands. They're really good at steals. I mean, they went up 13 at one point, and there was like seven minutes left in the game, and they were still hustling on defense. They looked like they just got out there at the beginning of the game. I mean, props to them. We we didn't shoot the ball well. They were all up in our grill. We were only down one at halftime, but they pulled away in the second half. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure at one point they went on a 14 nothing run, which absolutely just killed us. We could not recover from it. Um, I mean, in my opinion, I think Baylor's the best team in the country. I know I said that about Illinois, but they smacked us down a little bit. So uh, I do think it's Baylor. They got a good team over there. We'll bounce back from this Duke Tuesday night at Cameron Indoor in North Carolina. I'm excited for that. So we'll see if we can bounce back and beat a top 10 team after we just lost to one. Best of luck. Thank I, you. I, I, and I don't know if you know this, but Illinois and Illinois State have never played each other in basketball. And they were really? close in the NIT uh, back in 2018. 18? Mm-hmm. We were going to play each other at Illinois State. Yeah. And I, you and I texted about this. I was like, hey, if, if they come, and I, I was living uh, I was living at, at my, the Lodge? No, I lived at the Lodge my senior year. Um, but no, I lived at, I lived at 800 Samantha by my fraternity house. Okay. And I texted you. I'm like, if they come like, you know, bring whoever from Illinois, like bring Jacob Berg, like bring, you know, whoever, like, let's, let's have some fun. Like we'll, we'll go to the game. Like, That'd be whatever. crazy. It w- that would have been fun. It would have been nuts. I mean, I don't know how big is state farm. Uh, it's actually pretty big for a college basketball stadium. It looks like it's huge. How, do you know what your seating capacity is? I actually don't know what it is. ISU has 11,500. Really? It's huge. 11,500. That's a lot. And Bradley's bigger. I believe Bradley's over 12,000. No way. Which that's bigger. That's half the United Center. Yeah, that's ginormous. Uh, right now, Ray is looking up. So we're, we're going to get ready. Sorry, to... I'm, I'm looking it up. I, I really want to know now. We are going to close out. Uh, but again, everyone, thank you very much for listening in today. Uh, please remember to follow us on Spotify as that's where we'll be posting all of our... Uh, wait, sorry. Go ahead, Ray. It holds 15,500. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's pretty big. It's big, yeah. I didn't know it was that big. <laughs> Assembly Hall at Indiana holds 17,000. That's crazy. All right, we're getting off topic. And it's like a gym. Yeah. Which I think it's so weird. All right, very off to- topic. Sorry, everyone. So we're going to close out today. Uh, obviously, again, rough Bears loss. Uh, another rough season. With, well, news is probably going to break in the next couple hours of the decision of Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace, whether they're going to stay for the rest of the season, and Ted Phillips, if they're going to stay or not. Uh, curious to see players' reaction. We haven't actually had the chance. We literally hopped on this as soon as we could after I was done uh, reminiscing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, to close things out, we want to thank you guys again for listening in. Please follow us on uh, Spotify, SoundCloud, and YouTube. That is where we are posting all of our content for now. We will eventually be on Apple Music in the near future. Um, but thank- And then make sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. So to close out, again, my name is Nick Rohde. Ryan Shadman. And thank you again for listening to Just Another Year Chicago. Have a good night. Thank you again for listening to Just Another Year Chicago with Nick Rohde and Ryan Shadman. We'll see you guys next time.